Neighbors, you saw the title. We're gonna do Szechuan food today. Mala Shangguo. I don't know if I got the pronunciation down right, but I love this dish. In Korea, it started booming maybe around two or three years ago. It's spicy, it makes your lips numb. It's that beautiful Szechuan peppercorn. Now, there's two versions of this. Sometimes people go for the hot pot, like a mala hot pot, but me and Katie, personally, we love the stir fry. So if you like spicy foods and you haven't had the chance to try mala shangguo, you're in for a treat. Take a little notepad out, then try going to your local uh, Chinese market and help them out and buy some of these ingredients. It's delicious and uh, I know you'll like it. Now I have four ingredients that I love to put in my mala shangua. I think each one of these four adds a lot of different types of texture and let's start. The first one are these dried soybean curd sticks. So basically when you're making like soybean milk, the top becomes like a film. You lift it up very gently with the chopstick and then you can dry that top layer into a stick. So this is vegetarian. We're going to soak it in some water and then when you stir fry it later, it's firm but it turns a little bit spongy on the inside and it's a it's a really wonderful texture. It's easier to chop when it gets soft, but this won't fit into my bowl, so I might as well just chop it now. All right guys, this is rock hard now and we're gonna just soak it in some water so you don't lose a tooth. I'm gonna open up some of our glass noodles. I love the width of this noodle because it's gonna pick up a lot of that uh, mala sauce. Now for beginner cooks, you might think, why are we soaking this water in first when we're gonna cook it in high heat later? We're gonna stir fry and we want all the ingredients to cook through very quickly or else all the other vegetables are gonna wilt while this other one takes so much time. And now we have my all-time favorite mushroom. This is wood ear mushroom. Right now you're looking at fresh wood ear mushroom. Most of the times for you, you're gonna get a dried version. So get a handful of the dry ones and then put it in some water as well and then they'll expand to look like this. Now after you soak it in cold water for some time, this part is tough and you don't want to bite into that. So with a pair of scissors, just snip that part off. And most of the times if the mushroom is big, you can just split it in half with your hands. And it's this wonderful chewy texture that I just love. One peculiar thing about these woodier mushrooms, when you add them into stir fry, and as the moisture gets sucked out of it, it pops. So you hear this and then, do you know what this one is? It looks like a banana or or even a sea slug on the bottom of the ocean, right? <laughs> this is a, a lotus root. Looks like this. And it looks beautiful, no? When you bite into this, you get a little bit of like a, a, a crunchy texture. For this one, I like to add just a three or four squirts of vinegar. Mix that in. That's because these lotus roots, they have a little bit of an astringent taste, but if you put vinegar in and let them soak, um, it comes out into the water. So you guys chill out for a second. Now you can pick out uh, any mushroom that you like, green cabbage, and then some spinach or some bok choy. The market that I usually go to, they're out of bok choy. So this is uh, another Korean vegetable that kind of looks like bok choy, and we'll just work with that. Do some lazy chopping. Chop. Chop. All right, guys, then our beautiful vegetable here. All right, then of course, we're gonna put out some cilantro for our mala shangwa bar. And regardless of whether you're using store-bought mala sauce or you're making it from home, it's really nice to add in some sliced garlic. All right, so now the mala sauce we're gonna use is gonna be pretty spicy. So there's no need to add too much of these dried chili peppers. In fact, it's optional. I'm using it more um, for decoration and so that it looks nice. And these dried chili peppers, the one I'm using, they're not that spicy, okay? Please do not use these like small dried chili pepper, right? These are really spicy. And if you add that in mix with the mala sauce, you truly are gonna die. In fact, just skip this step. I don't even know why I'm showing this. Fast forward. All right, guys, and then I have some minced ginger. I think this is one of the most important aromatics when you're stir frying mala shangwa. Mine is frozen because I made this last night uh, in preparation for this. All right, and now look at this long table of ingredients. These got soft. Ooh, they're ready for cooking. 
All right, and this mala stir fry, it's just a great way to eat vegetables. Um, you don't actually need to add any protein. I mean, just all of these vegetables in itself, it's, it's, it's a full meal. But if you're omnivore like me, it's great to add a little bit of protein. I'm gonna do thinly cut sangyeopsal, which is thinly cut pork belly. Um, of, co of course, just use shabu shabu. It doesn't matter pork or beef. That's already too much. Some nice shrimp. Shrimp with some thinly sliced beef or pork. It's a serenade to my uh, taste buds. <laughs> We'll put these out. Um, to make malashangwa sauce from scratch, you need a lot. It's not impossible, but you need a lot of ingredients. And uh, I don't know. I just think this is one of those dishes where if it's your first time trying, go store-bought first. And then if you really like the taste, then you can invest into buying all the spices and making a large like mason jar full of sauce. This mala sauce, sometimes it comes one for hot pot and then there's another version for stir fry sauce. You want the stir fry sauce, not the hot pot one, because that gets very liquidy. And then let's take a look at the sauce packet. Oh, this is a thing of beauty. And if you take a look inside, you'll see that there's tons of Sichuan peppercorn. Mala sauce is basically an oily sauce that's spicy and, of course, that numbing sensation. When you finish eating the bottom of your lips, it's going to be like a puffer fish lips, right? All right, guys, now it depends on the brand that you're using. It starts with Sichuan peppercorns cloves, garlic, star anise, black cardamom, fennel, ginger, cinnamon, salt, and sugar. Again, with these ready-made mala sauces, if you first stir a little bit of minced garlic and this minced ginger, this minced ginger, really, with some oil, it just brings it up to the next level. It makes it taste like restaurant. And again, this one, again, skip this, no need. This on a medium high heat. Guys, we'll get a little bit of oil in. Nice. Of course, not everything. Just put a little bit of the garlic. Then one teaspoon, small tea, of minced ginger. Get that in there as well. Then these chili peppers, they're optional. Move it around. Then let's start with our protein. We'll add in. Then of course our shrimp. Move that around. Then of course our mushrooms and our lotus root. And then our dried bean curds. Then our shiitake mushrooms. All right, guys, then our cabbage. All right. Then our noodles, of course. Oh, man. I'm going to put in around two tablespoons. Maybe one more. That's three. Actually, that's four tablespoons. Mix that around. That smell is amazing. You know what? I want the color a little bit darker. I'm going to add in. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to just end up using the whole thing. <laughs> Mix that up. Mix that all around. Oh my gosh, guys, this is amazing. I'm gonna finish off with some of that bok choy. Give it a little bit of green. You hear that popping sound? That's the woodier mushrooms. <laughs> wow, and guys, that's it right there. <laughs> there is homemade mala shangwa right here. Beautiful. All right, and then take a close look. You got the noodles, ah, the lotus root. This is honestly one of the best stir fries you'll ever have. <laughs> I love it. All right, I'm gonna garnish it with just a little bit of cilantro on top. All right. And take a look at this. Does this not look like something you'll get out of a restaurant? It looks uh, perfect, right? Grab a little bit of the noodles. It's very nice. And actually, I'm gonna go with this lotus root as well. Let's start here. Mm. That sauce is incredible. Like I said, this dish is all about the vegetables. You get some on some rice, and you see those broken up peppercorn in between each bite. That's what's making my lower lip right now. I already crave some milk. I, I'm so impressed with the flavor right now. You know, I think uh, I'm never gonna go eat outside again. I'm gonna make this dish at home all the time. I'm thrilled about how delicious this came out. That. That mala sauce, it is on point, exactly like the restaurants. And you know exactly what I'm going to be eating for the next month. Mala shang, mala shangwa, mala shangwa. Mala shangwa.